Thanks, everybody. Ian, good to see you. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you. Good to see you, Darren. First time on one of these. And of course, Rebecca's there. Uh, not your first time. You've done these before. And mm -hmm. uh, you're going to tell us what's going on in the market, the transfer market, how you can save money um, and, uh, you know, not use your own bank. And we know they love taking our money. So, Rebecca, over to you. Morning, Chris. Thanks very much for inviting me on again. Um, I am uh, delighted to be here and discuss the currency markets. As most people are probably aware, there's been complete mayhem in the last few months with regards to what's going on with the major currency pairs, which is uh, euro, dollar and sterling. We've seen some huge swings, negative and, and positive, almost on a daily basis. And um, obviously, much of that is, is driven by what's going on in uh, Ukraine and um, inflation rates across the Eurozone, the UK and the States. So we've been extremely busy with um, people taking advantage of a weak pound and a weak Euro. Um, we've seen the Euro obviously recover somewhat over the last month, and we've seen the, the pound actually gain 18% strength in the last month as well against the dollar. So it had been a very tumultuous time. Um, we are currency specialists who can help clients save money when transferring foreign currency. Um, why use a currency broker? Simply because we're cheaper than the bank. So using your bank, you would expect as a, a customer with an account with them, premier customer or otherwise, that you would be getting a extremely competitive exchange rate from the bank. However, sadly, that's not the case. And um, historically, we found that the banks can take anything from one to 5% on the exchange rate they give you compared to the official rates that you see online. One to five percent doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're transferring 100,000 uh, euros, as an example, that can be as much as 5,000 euros you're losing just by using your, your normal bank. So what we do is we buy currency in bulk volume. We buy millions of euros, pounds, dollars, etc., in wholesale uh, rates. So uh, we, we're buying in, in discounted exchange rates, which means we can offer our clients a cheaper rate than the bank would give you directly. We do still make a margin, but our margins are a lot less than the bank. So that's the benefit really of using our services is mainly the exchange rate. And then also uh, having a, an experienced, impartial trader to guide you through the transaction on when might be a good time to buy your currency. Um, we can't really give um, advice in terms of, we can't predict the future obviously, but we can give you guidance on what's happening in the markets, what information is going to be released over the coming week or two and how that will impact the exchange rate. And then our clients can make an educated um, sort of decision on when is a good time to buy currency. I think it's worth noting, Rebecca, that there's no reason not to use you. That's what I always think. You know, might as well use you. And then if you're not, not going to beat the bank for whatever reason, then you've yeah. lost nothing. Exactly. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. So most clients aren't aware that there is another option apart from the bank. So and, until they sort of um, speak to us, they're unaware on how much they're losing through the bank. So what we say to clients is get an exchange rate from your bank, compare that with us like for like at the same time. And you can clearly see with transparency the difference that we can save you. And nine times out of ten, we will be saving the clients money. So it's it's a you know it's a, a real benefit for the clients just to just to and Rebecca, account. if somebody was going to exchange contracts or even complete and they know it's going to happen a, a month's time, can they forward buy if the if the rate's the right thing? Um that is if you'd asked me that question six months ago, absolutely yes. But because of the volatility in the markets, we're having to do a lot of what's called margin calls, whereby the, the market's moved so much um, in the client's favor or against the client's favor that we're having to phone the clients up and ask for more deposits. So at the moment, we aren't really advertising that forward option. Um, obviously, as the market settles down, that will probably be a product that we'll be offering our, our private clients. But at the moment, we're kind of doing on-the-spot transactions mostly just because the market has been extremely volatile and um yeah our banking providers are just sort of hold hold fire on, on offering that to every client um but having said that if you see a good rate today but you don't have a completion date for a month or two months time we can still fix that rate today 
we can hold your funds on account. We can actually open a what's called a virtual IBAN account. So a virtual bank account in euros, for example, for the client, they can hold the euros in that account and then transfer them at their completion date. So you can still take advantage of the rate even before they need to actually compete on the property purchase. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, just um, this is this is a little bit um, out of date. This is up to the end of September, but I've kept it as it is purposely to show you the, the volatility and how much that can impact clients um, property purchase. So <clears throat> um, I can't actually see the screen. I'm trying to move. Away. Um, so the US dollar against euro, as I mentioned, has been extremely volatile. And actually, we've seen until um, the end of September, when, when the euro is at its weakest against the dollar, it's actually at its weakest in 20 years. So it, it was a really good time for people to buy euros if they've got dollars or a dollar pegged currency, such as the dirham or many other of the um, Asian and GCC countries are pegged with dollar. So um, just to kind of give you an example, on $100,000, if you were transferring it to euros, you would have saved over $23,000 just from the volatility of the, um, the swings in the currency over the last year, which is a huge, huge savings. On $300,000, it's just under $70,000. And on $500,000, you're looking at over $115,000 difference just on the exchange rate. So Amazing. <clears throat> the exchange rate when you buy is obviously extremely uh, crucial to how much your property is going to cost you in your own currency. You know, if you can save um, almost 20% on the exchange rate, that means you, obviously you're buying the property 20% cheaper. So it is really important to speak to a currency company and get some guidance on what's going on in the markets. Um, we have seen some recovery from the euro quite substantially since, since the end of September, but it is a very good time to buy your euros at the moment. So um, anybody that's looking at purchasing in Berlin, you know, speak to us. We can we can get you the best exchange rate and also give you guidance on what's going on in the markets. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, it may be good if you put in the chat at the bottom your email address whilst the guys are talking and then, uh, yeah, sorry, have you got more to go? <laughs> um, just to, sorry, I'll keep it quick. Just to explain how the process works. Um, we are fully regulated and authorised by the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK, and um, so therefore we have anti-money laundering processes in place. The process to use the service is very simple. Clients just sign up for free uh, to open an account with us. Once they've registered and signed up, then we can book an exchange rate for them and guide them through the whole process from start to finish. Uh, usually, you're looking at uh, completion from start to finish and booking the rate to receiving the money the beneficiaries account one to two working days. So it is a very quick and simple service to use. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you very much. Uh, and if somebody wants to get in touch with you, just put your uh, details in the bottom yes. of that chat box. Um, and if anyone's got any questions, um, please ask as we go along. We are live from the home of football in Qatar today. So uh, now we're going to uh, share the screen with, uh, with the guys. There we go. Thank you very much. Ian's from Austria, not Germany, so that we won't be talking about the World Cup. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to kick things off. Um, so first of all, uh, Chris, thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, and also thanks for everybody that's dialed in. I know it's a busy time of year, so it's uh, very much appreciated. Um, so the purpose of this webinar is to provide an update um, on the current state of the Berlin residential property market where we are in relation to the German mortgage market, and finally a run through of the new project that Bolson launched in the last few weeks, Gödelstrasse 31. But before we get into that, I just wanted to briefly run through the relationship between the Tenbringen Group and Bolson. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing most people on this call uh, wouldn't have heard of either, so I think it's quite useful. So the Tenbringen Group are a major European developer. Um, they've been both constructing and developing real estate for well over 100 years. And in Germany specifically, they are now one of the largest residential developers. Volsung was founded in 2019, essentially to act as the sales and marketing arm for Tenbrinker outside of Germany. Up till that point, their residential projects were sold exclusively to local German buyers or institutional investors via their in-house sales team. So Volsung sits within the Tenbrinker group of companies 
and exclusively sells Tempringer developments. To drill down even further on that, we will only take on a market Tempringer projects um, that we believe make sense from an investment perspective. So that means projects that can deliver strong rental and resale value um, with exceptional capital growth and yield potential. And that's why we've exclusively focused on Berlin and then specific areas within Berlin uh, up to this point. So since Volsung started operations, we've sold 181 units spread across four projects. And the majority of those were sold across three projects in 2020. So those three projects have all completed within the last uh, six months. And in fact, the final units are currently being handed over and tenanted as we speak. So I've been working in residential buy led investment for over 20 years, and there have been a lot of very positive experience with developers over that time. However, there have also been far too many negative experiences, specifically lengthy delays and subpar build quality. The main reason I left um, or resigned from my last company and started working with Tim Brinker was because those negative experiences were becoming increasingly more frequent. So working with uh, working directly with a tier one developer um, in a market that I was already very bullish on uh, was the idea. Um, and the outcome has been exactly that. The delays even factoring in COVID have been minimal um, and the quality of the finished product has been exactly what was promised and expected. Um, and then on the market side, the units, as well as being currently valued at more than what we sold them for, they've also tenanted extremely quickly. Uh, the rents have been higher than what we projected to the buyers at the point of sale. And because of the strength of the rental market in Berlin at the moment, we've been able to be extremely aggressive um, with the terms of our tenancy agreements. So unfortunately, this, this outcome isn't the norm for people purchasing foreign off-plan developments, um, which is why I'm incredibly satisfied with how this has gone, and in particular with how smooth it's been for the clients that have invested with us. So if we just go on to the next slide. So these are some examples of recent 10 Brinker projects. So the top two are both mixed-use schemes um, that were sold to institutional developers for well over 100 million euros. And the top right was actually a contract from the German government. And the bottom two are large residential projects. Uh, the one on the left is in Berlin and the one on the right is from Frankfurt. And so just on to the next slide. So I mentioned previously that Volsung will only take on projects that represent strong investment potential. And to that end, we've exclusively focused on Germany and Berlin, even though Ten Brinker do operate throughout Europe. So I thought it might be useful just to quickly expand on that. So even though Germany is the largest economy in Europe, it's politically stable and relatively low taxation compared to most other Western countries, it doesn't tend to get the same level of attention from retail property investors as other more established markets do. Every year, PricewaterhouseCoopers and the Urban Land Institute, um, they come out with a report where they speak to some of the largest real estate investors in the world and ask them where they will invest in the following year. So since 2015, Berlin has ranked either first or second. So it's worth considering why so many of these large institutional real estate investors are putting so much capital into the Berlin market. In 2021, for example, Berlin saw more than four times as much investment into its residential property sector than the second place city, which was London. So to go into further detail on the reasons why, I'm gonna pass you over to Ian Sigmund. So Ian is based in Berlin. He knows the Berlin market uh, extraordinarily well and the specific location of this new project also. So Ian, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Thanks, all, Darren. Now, uh, initially I'm gonna talk a little bit about why we've chosen specifically Berlin to focus on. Um, as Darren mentioned, uh, Tim Brinker builds all over Europe. Uh, so we could sell de developments in Spain, in Holland, um, in Greece. Uh, in other tier one German cities, but we specifically focused on Berlin um, since uh, our company's inception. Uh, now, when we talk about fundamentals, the, the key thing that uh, always comes up is, is a market undersupplied? And what metrics do you look at uh, to determine whether it is or not? Uh, I think by far the most interesting figure to look at to summarize an entire market is a residential vacancy rate. And that tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Um, as the figure that you have there uh, is how many units in the entire city are currently tenanted um, or vacant, uh, as the case may be. Uh, in Berlin, which is a city of 3.8 million people, the residential vacancy rate is only 0.9%. Um, so to have a vacancy rate below 1% effectively translates into if any unit comes onto the market for rent, um, it is snapped up. 
uh, by potent, uh, potential renters on the local market. Uh, I think uh, I'm just going to go on to this next slide very briefly and to show you how that, that translates into reality today. So we just had three projects complete this year, and I think it was about 150 units. Uh, pretty much every single unit uh, was rented out within two weeks. And um, in the Spiegel, which is a, a major newspaper in uh, Germany, they actually came out with some figures as to when you put a rental apartment on the local portal, which is Immobilien Scouts in Germany, how many inquiries do you get for that apartment per week? And bear in mind, th these numbers are focused on new build development. So in Berlin, you get 76 inquiries uh, for a single apartment uh, that is put online with, per week. Uh, that contrasts to the second place of Cologne, uh, third Munich, where you're more around the 18 to 20 inquiries per week level. Um, so in fact, this, this shows why we've chosen to focus on Berlin specifically um, throughout Germany. Now, um, other than that, what, what really is driving the growth? Because over the past five years, we've seen 10% growth per annum um, in apartment prices, which has been great for a lot of our clients who bought three, four years ago. Um, they've generated fantastic returns. Rental growth has been very, very robust, four to 7%. Uh, we've been able to um, outperform uh, what we initially uh, predicted, as Darren mentioned, uh, with regards to our gross yields when we sold our initial projects. Um, why exactly is, uh, is the market growing so fast uh, other than the undersupply? Uh, Berlin has very much focused itself on the digital and tech sector, uh, which now employs one out of every seven people uh, in Berlin, and it's attracting more and more big multinational names uh, to the city. Uh, Tesla was a, a very, very big case there where they opened their Gigafactory, I think it was just about two years ago now, and um, that is constantly expanding. They're always hiring people there. Amazon uh, actually pre-let an office tower three years in advance, and that was 29 floors. Um, that is the level of commitment they have to Berlin um, as a European tech hub um, when they're, they're trying to rent something three years um, in advance. You've also got Zalando, which is the largest e-commerce fashion retailer, if anyone's familiar with ASOS. Uh, it's a similar sort of concept. Uh, Zalando are just larger um, than ASOS uh, in Europe. And yeah, in times of uncertainty and recession, uh, the fact that Berlin is a capital city uh, means that uh, you have a lot of government jobs based out, based out of there, um, which means that uh, there is less hits to unemployment rates um, when you have times of uncertainty, as opposed to um, other uh, cities which are focused on, on different uh, sectors. Now, finally, infrastructure. Uh, one of the biggest uh, things that Berlin was really missing over the past 10 years was an internet or a truly international airport. Uh, they were previously operating only out of uh, Tegel uh, Airport, um, which had very small runways and wasn't able to accommodate larger aircrafts. So that meant there weren't direct flights from some of the biggest uh, business hubs around the world, be it uh, Dubai, New York, Shanghai, Beijing. Uh, that all changed as of October of last year, and the uh, Berlin-Brandenburg Airport was opened at long last. Uh, so because of COVID, they haven't been as uh, as forward in pushing through um, direct international flights, but uh, from places like Qatar, they were the first um, country to open up direct flights um, to Berlin, and we expect to see more and more uh, other cities follow suit. Now, whilst uh, it's all well and good looking at uh, markets and seeing whether they are undersupplied or oversupplied and making a decision to uh, purchase in that market based on those indicators, um, ultimately, if you're buying as an investor, there's two major things that you need to look into. Uh, the first being financing and mortgages, and the second, uh, tax. Now, financing has, of course, been a hot topic uh, this year just because of the interest uh, rates increasing uh, quite rapidly. Um, before we launch any projects, and um, we work very, very closely with a pension fund in Germany who do the vast majority of lending um, for our clients and our projects. Um, so they will lend a minimum of 60% loan to value um, on the projects that we have. Uh, and the interest rates are currently 3.85% for a five-year fix and 3.91% for a 10-year fix. Now, whilst that has increased, um, it's uh, safe to say that these interest rates, certainly at a five and 10-year fix, are very, very, very competitive if we compare them with um, other countries in Europe, but also around the world. Um, at the moment. Uh, so lending remains very, very favorable, and pretty much everyone will qualify for a loan as long as you have uh, a job um, Ian, and a salary. Can I just jump in there? That's unusual, isn't it? Sorry, just to give you a, a breather. Sure. Uh, minimum 60%, not maximum 60%, minimum. Does that mean somebody can't borrow 50%? Uh, no, they absolutely can. So um, 
that's a, a little bit misleading. So they can actually borrow as little as uh, 20, 30 percent um, if they chose to. Um, so what I mean by minimum 60 percent is um, worst case scenario, if you're looking to maximize your loan to value, um, you will be able to get 60 percent loan to value. Um, it's possible that uh, you'll be able to get slightly more, um, but we prefer to play a little bit on the safe side. And um, just to let you know, we have our own mortgage department here at Holborn, so we can advise on those as well. One other question I wanted to ask, Ian, uh, in my previous life, obviously, the three of us all worked together. Um, and at that point in time, with the German mortgages, they did the valuation for the whole building at the same time at the beginning. And therefore, you knew you were going to get 54 percent or 61 percent. Is that still the case? I mean, that was such a, a big thing. Yeah, exactly. So there's, it's only the pension fund um, that offers to do that. Uh, normal uh, banks in Germany wouldn't give you a valuation up front. Um, but yeah, that's the process that we still follow today. That's really useful. Sorry to interrupt. Carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, so that pretty much wraps up the uh, mortgages section. Um, now, I think one, by far one of the largest or most attractive reasons to invest in Germany is the fact that provided you hold an apartment for 10 years, you don't pay any capital gains tax when you sell that apartment um, after 10 years time. Um, so if you look at Europe as a whole, there's very, very few markets that offer you the ability um, to exit your investments after any period of time and not have to pay any capital gains tax whatsoever. So we highly recommend if anyone is looking at Germany uh, that they hold for a 10 year period. And that 10 year clock begins to tick as soon as they sign or notarize the purchase contract in Berlin. So even if a project is two years off plan, the clock would start ticking from point of signing of that purchase contract. Um, so of course, if you're living in um, uh, low or zero tax jurisdictions uh, in the Middle East, uh, in Hong Kong, Singapore, that don't have any capital gains tax, um, you can really take advantage of this. Of course, if you're living in Germany, um, that will also be the case. Questions just thing... come in, Ian. Sorry to just cut across your questions just come in. Do they have to go to Berlin to sign any documents at all, or can it all be done virtually? No, everything can be done remotely. Um, so both the signing uh, of the property itself, um, your lawyer would represent you on your behalf um, at the notary's office in Berlin for signing. And with regards to the mortgage, that can also all be done remotely uh, wherever you are around the world. Thank you. Um, so another thing that we don't mention too much on the tax front or haven't in the past is the fact that in Germany, uh, mortgage interest is still 100% tax deductible. So whilst if you hold the property for 10 years, you won't be paying any capital gains tax necessarily, you would pay a small amount of rental tax, uh, rental, ta uh, rental income tax um, on the um, rents that you've generated. And that is 100% mortgage interest deductible. So despite the fact that the interest rates have gone up somewhat, um, that is ta fully tax deductible. Um, so there's not very many other markets that still offer you that ability. Um, so just another reason why it's quite tax advantageous to purchase property in Germany. Now, on to the project itself that we've just launched a few weeks ago, Gutelstrasse 31 in Friedrichshain. Um, so this project is located in East Berlin. Uh, so Friedrichshain is actually the most popular district for expats in the entire city. 30% uh, of the population are expats. Um, so it's very, very, very attractive. Um, for age demographic between 20 and 40 years old. You have a lot of digital nomads, um, a lot of uh, sort of new economy, new tech, um, people looking to move uh, to Berlin will be focusing their efforts on Friedrichshain if they can find an apartment to rent there. Um, so on that basis, we've catered the unit sizes to be more attractive to international people uh, looking to rent an apartment here. And that has been primarily focused on smaller units. So we've got 60 in total. Um, 31 Manhattans and 17 one beds that we will be marketing. There are also 12 larger units, um, but those are three beds plus um, and will be a lot, lot more expensive. Um, so those will be exclusively sold to owner occupiers. Um, but yeah, we, we think the most attractive demographic for this market in Friedrichshain will be smaller units. So on average, um, the units here are about 40 to 50 square meters. Just a general idea of what the apartments could look like upon completion. And onto the location. So what I've done here is taken a snapshot of what I consider very, very central Berlin, um, a little bit tilted to the east. Um, so if you can see here, this is Friedrichshain, this whole district there. So anything east of Alexanderplatz will be considered Friedrichshain and it's a district our project is located in. Um, Gutelstrasse 31 being over here. 
Now you're five minutes uh, walk away from the local S-Bahn and U-Bahn, so the overground and underground train stations, and all in time to the geographical center of uh, Berlin, Alexanderplatz, is 16 minutes. Um, so extremely centrally located, um, very, very easy access to local transport. Uh, in 23 minutes, uh, that's the walk to the station and the tube line over to the central station of Berlin um, is 23 minutes time only. And you're 26 minutes away from the Brandenburg Gate. And right next to that, you have the German parliament as well. Ian, just now, a quick question. Just a quick question yep. popped up. May you, on the previous slide, no need to go back to it, um, Manhattans, do I assume they're two bedroom? Is that what a Manhattan is? In Manhattan is similar to a studio. The only difference oh. being that there is a wall that's cordoning off the bed or bedroom area um, to the rest of the uh, apartment. Uh, so we we did actually, we built a lot of Manhattans in our last project and found they rented very, very well um, because they just provide a little bit more openness and space to the apartment. We could add an additional wall and a door to the apartment and turn it into a one bed. Um, we just felt that um, from a building perspective, it made more sense um, to build Manhattans. So that's what they are. We'll go back to the previous slide because you get a good example with a wall right there. So that's the only difference between a Manhattan and a studio. Okay. Um, now, if you're speaking to any uh, local German, uh, the biggest selling point for this project by far is the fact that we are located within Boxhagener Platz. Um, so Boxhagenplatz is probably the most uh, popular area in Berlin for restaurants. It, it has a very vibrant bar scene, and there's a lot of sort of funky boutique stores um, that Berlin is quite known for. Um, and we are located right next door um, to that area. I mean, there's even a movie uh, made about this part of Berlin. Uh, so very, very, very popular area. And this is really what is driving most of the expats to want to live in this part of Berlin. Now, on top of that, we're 10 to 15 minutes uh, walk away from the Media Spree and the Berlin Wall. Um, so it's a piece of history there. Um, so the Berlin Wall is all along uh, the River Spree uh, down here. But um, after reunification, the German government put a lot of money to redevelop uh, sections of East Berlin. And one of the key focuses there was the Media Spree. So all along the river there, you have a media focus. Um, so companies such as MTV, Universal, Coca-Cola, all have their offices um, headquartered along the River Spree there. Um, other major employment nodes, uh, Amazon have their headquarters, as I mentioned before, the tower there will be completed in the next few months. Um, so they'll house between 1,000 and 1,500 employees out of there. That's 15 to 20 minutes away by bike from our development. So it's, it's certainly gonna add a lot to the area and with a lot more incoming expats as well. Zalando, uh, again, 20 minutes by bike from our projects. Uh, they are the largest uh, company headquartered in Berlin by market cap. Um, again, their offices are also in Friedrichshain. Um, so this really is a focus for some of the larger tech companies, um, logistics firms. Uh, and finally, to finish it off, the Mercedes-Benz Arena is where you have the majority of the concerts, any major events in Berlin um, will take place in the Mercedes-Benz Arena there. Um, one thing that's gaining quite a lot of um, you know, uh, hype, I, I would say, or uh, attractiveness is the uh, esports scene in Berlin. Um, so you have a lot of esports events. They will be held out of the Mercedes-Benz Arena there. And Berlin really is a hub for that. Um, a little quirky anecdote, um, obviously, I've, having been to the site many, many times, um, right next to our development itself, you have one of the uh, the top esports teams in the world, uh, Fnatic. Um, so it just gives you an idea of the type of people living in this area and this part of Berlin. Now, I've run through quite a few different locations, so I thought it might make sense to put some pictures uh, to these um, these different locations we've just touched on. Um, on the right here, that is going to be Amazon's headquarters. Um, it actually looks pretty much exactly like that. The facade is almost done. Uh, as I said before, it's about two months, two, three months away from completion now. Um, in the center there, you have the iconic red Coca-Cola uh, office building. The bottom left is Zalando's headquarters, and then on the top left, the Mercedes-Benz Arena. Now, in terms of the uh, acquisition process itself, uh, were you to move ahead um, with a, a unit uh, in the development, um, the process is fairly simple. Um, you fill out a reservation form, provide a copy of your passport, uh, and send a reservation fee over to us. That is purely to hold the unit. That amounts to 5,000 euro. 
um, but is refunded to you um, once you've gone ahead with the development and paid the first milestone for the, for the development itself. Um, once we received that information, we'd introduce you to uh, the lawyers that would represent you in Berlin, so you don't have to go over there in person. Um, that would be VPMK. They're one of the largest um, real estate attorneys or largest firms for uh, real estate in Berlin. And um, the most arduous part of the entire process is simply the fact that you need to book an appointment at the local German consulate, wherever you might be around the world, um, to sign the power of attorney. You then send that power of attorney to your lawyers in Berlin, and they're authorized to sign the purchase contract on your behalf. Um, now, once uh, they've signed the purchase contract, your lawyers, um, you'll be required to transfer the acquisition costs. That amounts to about 8 to 9% um, of the value of the property um, over to your lawyers. And the next payment, or actually the initial payment for this development, uh, would be the uh, first milestone, which is 25% in September 2023. Now, all the uh, remaining payments are made in line with the uh, construction milestone, so that depends when we finished uh, various stages of the development. Um, only then would the, um, the additional payments fall due. That pretty much wraps it up for me. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions uh, if anyone has any. Ian, I, I, I can actually share the um, the consulate, the, the German consulate in Dubai is actually behind the old zoo. So it's I've been there many times um, with clients. It's, it's painless. It really is. And I'm sure that um, whether you're in South Africa or Asia or wherever, I, I know we've got some clients on here. Um, so please do reach out to your wealth manager that invited you. Um, and if you need any questions answered. And the other thing, you know, Darren and Ian are really good at, if you have clients, then we are quite happy, we are happy to, to join a, a Zoom with them. Is that all right with you guys? Absolutely. 100%, 100%. Yeah, thank you. So no more questions. You've done a great job there and I'm still alive. The medicine's arrived. So um, <laughs> I'm quite pleased to get through there without coughing. Um, well done. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks very much. Thank you, Miltos, and this and many other worldwide award-winning shows are on our website. So please have a look. Um, this will be on there, depending on Miltos, but it's usually tomorrow. Um, and, and then it will be on the on the website. So, Rebecca, thank you very much indeed. Always lovely to see you. Very much for inviting me. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Ian, Darren, thanks very much. Let's just hope we can Thanks get some sales. It looks like a great project. Yeah, it Thanks is. It. Thanks a lot, Chris. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Thanks, lad. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.